the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service with a difference. Um, when it comes to the imposition of the sign of the cross on our foreheads, I invite you for us to do it together. If you're not comfortable with it, just do it, trace it on the back of your hand so that you just have a physical sense of the cross and what it stands for. And we will all say together when it comes to this, I turn away from sin and healed by Christ. Since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection. It became the custom of the Church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those who were preparing for baptism at Easter and by those who were to be restored to the Church's fellowship from which they had been separated through their sins. In course of time, the Church came to recognize that by a careful keeping of these days, all Christians might take heart to call for repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I invite you therefore in the name of the Church to observe this Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Word. And so let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God by saying together the liturgy of penitence. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbours and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who have come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. 
accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Now I invite you to trace the sign of the cross on your forehead with the words, I turn away from sin and be healed by Christ. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are now going to sing the hymn 40 Days and 40 Nights. The reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, and verses 16 to 21. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen, and your father who sees what it is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where, you, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For the word of God in scripture. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. On Sunday, we have had the scene set by Friederike for our Lenten journey when she talked about Julian of Norwich. And Ulva, the curate from Bennington and Sandhurst, is leading a contemplative Lent course uh, using the writings of Julian of Norwich. And one of our Lent book suggestions is Matthew Fox's book, Julian of Norwich's Shared Wisdom in a Time of the pandemic. Now being an Anchorest, Julian sheltered in place and developed a deep wisdom that she shared in her book. And this year it seems a good time for some to return to her teachings and that's why I've chosen for our Ash Wednesday service to tell you a bit about Julian's contribution to every century since she wrote her visions and gave counsel to people. Very little is known about Julian, not even her name, and therefore she is called after the church, St. Julian in Norris, where she lived as an anchoress, walled up in a small room attached to the church, not dissimilar from our anchorite cell that was once upon a time attached to our church, where only the window uh, to the sanctuary is left. St. Julian belonged to a great flowering of medieval English mystics. She lived a hermit's life, albeit with a cat. From her little cell in Norwich, she journeyed into the heart of God, and over many years she received visions of God's passionate love for all humankind. And as with most Christian mystics down the ages, what they learn through contemplation is meant to be preached and given to others so that all may benefit from their gift of spiritual insight. And for such is the direction of love that it flows outwards and seeks the good of the others. And so Julian says at the end of her work, would you know your Lord's meaning in, the, in things? Know it well. Love was the meaning. Who showed it to you? Love. 
Why did God show it to you? For love. Because of her immense capacity of love, she is called Mother Julian, who is still very popular today of her because of her optimism. Her teaching that we are loved into existence and held in being by God's love, and that at the end of all things, all will be well, for all that is done is well done, since our Lord God does all. And this expression of God's care is coupled with her famous image of God's love. She saw that all creation is being held in God's hand, as small as insignificant as a hazelnut. And we often see a portrait of her holding the hazelnut in her hand. And all this God held in being because of his eternal and unchanging love. And it's all too easy to forget that all of creation is good and its very existence is a sign of God's ongoing love and care. And Julian reminds us of this. But she also reminds us of the promise given in the book of Revelation that Christ had conquered all evil. So that at the end of time, all things will be made new in Christ and so indeed all will be made good again. Julian was very aware of sin and the need for conversion through love and humility. And she says, because of our changeability, we fall often into sin. Only God is constant and true. We, however, are affected by others and by our own folly and blindness. Julian considers it to be an inevitable part of the human condition. However, what she does fear is the sort of dread that paralyzes us from approaching God after we have sinned. For Julian, what is a worry is the lack of contrition and the fear itself that may arise from sin and lead to despair. She therefore emphasizes that we have to be confident in God's love and of his mercy so that when we sin, we should not run away. She says, with this false threat of our wretchedness and the pain that the devil threatens us with, but we should rather be aware of our wretchedness and flee to our Lord. And then she says, meekly and patiently bear the penance that God gives us. Suffering alongside our beloved Lord Jesus, who endured the passion for our salvation. So she says, the remedy is that our Lord is with us, keeping us and leading us to fullness of joy. The admission of our sinfulness and our need for a saviour requires humility on our part. And it would actually be spiritual pride to deny this and avoid the embrace of what she calls the divine physician. Julian says that she asked for three wounds in her life. The wound of true contrition, the wound of kind compassion, and the wound of earnest longing for God. And the first wound is essentially about ourselves. It is the wound that we are sinful creatures, and once we are at peace with our sinful condition, we can accept our need for Jesus Christ and flee to him. The second wound concerns our relationship with other people, whom we should treat with kindness, and this is evident in Julian's writing, her gentleness and the fact that she was a well-known spiritual counsellor in her time. And the third wound concerns our relationship with God, and it is this that she says dwelt in her heart continually, this desire for God, which is written into every human heart and grows in love. The more we know and experience God's love, his providence and mercy is that which directs us to our final end in God and leads us home to him. And with these wounds imprinted on the heart, Julian has given us the core of the Christian faith, 
confidence in God and hope in salvation through a loving God who wants us to return to him and be ever closer. Amen. shall be well and all shall be well all shall be well all shall be well all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well receive the gift of healing from our mother her deep and dark and secret burden sing. All shall be well, and all shall be well. All shall be well, all shall be well. Receive the gift of healing from the shaman's touch. The wounded healer's power to revive. Shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Receive the gift of healing from the well of tears, be washed anew by grief and sorrowing. All shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.